I just remembered a dream. Tell me. You remember when I woke up, was it yesterday, day before, and I said, there's a heresy? People are being, believing yes. a heresy. Yes. There's a heresy coming to the body of Christ, and some of them have already embraced it. Yeah. It having to do with becoming so spiritual and getting new revelations, revelations to the point that it nullified the word of God. Like this is, and one of those areas was about giving. They decided tithing isn't scriptural, that's just Old Testament, and that we're putting ourselves back under the law, which is scripturally illiterate because Abraham tied before the law to the king of Salem. So it's, and if they know the word of God, they know that, okay, so if they don't believe in tithing, how about this? Jesus said to give, and it'll be given unto you, and there's an actual grace for giving that he said, I would, I would have you abound in this grace also. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Apostle Paul talked about. And that's one of the anointings that the Lord said he was releasing on the spirit-filled body of Christ for this season. It was a supernatural anointing for finances. And so the enemy has come along and tried to just cut that off at the knees by giving everybody this revelation that they don't have to give and that all these preachers, I mean, when Mike posted that video about honor being restored to the pastors and, or the ministers of God mm -hmm. and pray for them, you would not believe the dishonor and angry comments that came in that we had to review and get rid of, of people who they were calling preachers money grubbers and that all they want is your money. And I mean, they just went down the, I mean, we've heard it for years, but I couldn't believe just how. I mean, the fact that he would even say, prepare your tithes and offerings, they were offended because they have believed the heresy. And it is a heresy to not believe the word, that they have a special revelation and they don't have to be doers of the word. Now we understand something that apparently Apostle Paul didn't get. Um, <laughs> they are really smart folks, right. but it is a false voice of prophecy. It has crept into the specifically the prophetic movement. And Jezebel has really sneaked into the prophetic movement sure. with these doctrines. And all of it is to keep the preachers down, to keep the word, keep them from being able to do what they're called to do. Not only the ministries, but the people of God. Because if we're afraid to give, and if we're not operating in um, the principles of the kingdom, sowing and reaping, if you're more comfortable with that, um, it's, if, you're, if you're not operating in those things, you're not sending out a ship. It's, you don't have a ship coming in. Right. You have to keep, I'm saying you have to, we, we are aware that we, what do you, how do you say it? Live to give, give to live, what is it? Live to give, <laughs> because, I mean, the Lord even showed me in visions in 2000. He said, I'm sending an anointing for supernatural finances to the spirit-filled church. Just like he said, he was getting ready to raise up and honor the spirit-filled ministries and give them influence in America. Right. He told me in 2000, I'm sending an anointing to the spirit-filled church. It's an anointing for supernatural finances. And he told me to start preaching it to the people back then, and he told me to tell them that recession was coming. And at the time, people didn't want to hear it, and they thought it was a bad confession. Bad prophecy. Bad prophecy, yeah. They didn't want to hear it. And the Lord was saying, be prepared to obey God with your finances now, because he's releasing prosperity, not just enough. He's releasing more than enough. He said he would make us examples of his glory. He showed me my hands with cash just flowing through. And that's the operative thing. It was flowing through. I wasn't just holding on to it. It was for souls. It was for the kingdom. It was for feeding the poor. It was for much more than that. It was for taking the word to the nations. Because, and, and it was a covenant thing. That God said it was part of restoring covenant to his people financially. And it's a biggie to him. And that's why the world is freaking out. Because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous and the just. That's right. And that transfer is happening. 
And so don't lump yourself in with the wicked. It's not going away from you. It's coming to you. God wants his people to receive and understand the receiving anointing. You, most people are quite skilled in a giving anointing. You know, you listen to God and you say, oh, Lord, did you really say 5,000? Let's make it 500. I feel a little more comfortable with that. Okay, so you know how to give. <laughs> Some of you know how to go, okay, get behind me, Satan. He really did say 5,000. You know who you are. And um, not that I'm joking, but, you know, it's not the amount. It's the heart. You can have, it doesn't matter how much is in your bank account. If you have a spirit of prosperity, you will never do without, period. It doesn't matter. It's, we don't judge it by the way the world does. They said, my people need to understand and develop a receiving anointing. It's not just for the preachers to receive. It's for everybody to receive. It is an anointing. And yes, he uses your job or whatever, but it's, he is not limited to your job to get money to you. He will get it to you however he has to do it because he can't lie, first of all. Actually, first of all, because he loves you. And second of all, because he can't lie. <laughs> How about that? It's not just a heavenly contract. It's, it's, it's a love thing. He loves you so much. He will do whatever he has to do to put a roof over your head that you can stand up tall and say, this is from God. God has done a thing for me. And I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Yeah. And, and God gets the glory. He wants to do that in every person's life. Did you see me looking at you guys? Yeah. There's more. There's more. Good. He wants you to know he is on your side. And the more you give, I mean, he's just like, oh, he's so proud of you. And, and I can tell you, honestly, we just, we give. We are givers, personally. Oh, yeah. I, I don't preach something I don't do. Right. And w when, we built, when we bought a church building in, in Oregon, mm -hmm. real quickie, just thing to know, the realtor came to us and said, okay, we made a, we made a, an offer on a building, and the people came back and said, not only no, but they raised the price. So they didn't want us tongue talkers in their building. So we were like, okay, Lord, what do we do? And so eventually the time came that we, we made some kind of offer that, okay, they were desperate enough to sell it to the, the charismatics. And so <laughs> the realtor said, you had better start a campaign in your church to raise the down payment for this thing because mm -hmm. you're going to need some serious money here. And we just thought, okay. I got up on Sunday because this, this is my, it's, it's my anointing. I mean, this is too, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> it's mine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's for both of us. You can have it. Can I have it? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> And <laughs> I'm joking. Um, it's for both of us. It's for everybody. So I got up and I told the people what was going on. And I said, you know what? I am not called. We are not called to be fundraisers. We are called to preach the gospel. And I am not going to stand up here and raise money. I'm not going to come up here and say, who will give whatever? And who will give? And then take an offering and then go, oh, good, not enough. Who will give? No, I won't do that. The only reason I'm talking about it now is so you know what I won't do. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm trying not to do that. But you need to know there's an anointing on our ministry that when people give to this ministry, it breaks the strongholds. It, it, it breaks loose your own finances. You need to know that's an anointing. It is an anointing. And when you connect with it, it doesn't matter how much. If all you, could, if all you got is 10 bucks, God will honor it. It's not the amount. It's the heart. It's the faith. It's believing God. And so I got up and I told those people. They told us that we needed, you know, how many thousand, whatever it was, to get that building. And I said, so what we're doing is we're going to receive a special offering today for Reinhard Bonnke. When he was doing Beyond 99. I don't know if anyone remembers that. He was doing a, a deal where he was trying to get the gospel into every home, like on the planet. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, we are about souls. We are not about raising money for buildings. If God wants to give us that building, he's going to have to give us that building because I'm not going to raise funds for buildings. I am. We're going after souls. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. It's not that we didn't need it. The Lord has need of it. But he also knows how to make sure you get it without you having to go striving after it. And so we sought first the kingdom. We raised money and sent it to Reinhard Bonnke instead. I don't know how many thousand. To help him get the gospel into every household, at least every house that had a mail, a mailing box or a mailbox, mm -hmm. mailing address. And we sent it to him, to him. And it was like just a couple weeks later, the realtor calls and says, I don't know what's going on, but... The people, the, the sellers have decided they just, they had a board meeting and they just want to get rid of this building. Mm -hmm. They're asking if you guys would just take over their loan. I mean, that was like $25,000 less than what, than what we offered them. Than what we offered them. Mm -hmm. And they said, they don't even want a down payment. All you got to do is sign these papers we had to pay $2 to have it notarized. That was it. <laughs> and we had, and it was ours. Mm -hmm. So God has ways of getting things to you that you have no idea. It's, and, and you don't get to walk that adventure unless you just, I mean, take a stand and say, no, I'm not here to raise money. I'm not. If the Lord tells you to send it, I would encourage you to do it for your sake as well as souls. Right. Soul. The Lord has need of it. But I just want you to know our heart. You need to receive. I, and I just want to release that receiving anointing on every person in here. You need to learn how to receive. Right. Receive it. Receive. That's right. Receive. That's right. Receive what God has for you. That's right. Finances are not wicked. The only thing we're doing with we're tithing is we're just circumcising it, you know, and bringing it into the covenant. That's all. It's yours. It's a blessing from God. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. And he wants to make you rich and add no sorrow to it. And the only way that that happens is we're seeking first the kingdom, and then all these things are added to us, and there's no sorrow with it. So I want to release that on you. Who? 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 And he said he would make us, you guys, examples of his glory, of what he can and will do through his children, his people, his warriors. You don't have to be a preacher to receive great financial blessings and to walk in a supernatural realm of finances. And it doesn't have to be multi-level marketing. I mean, if God gives you a cow, like Kathy calls them cows, a business or something like that, great. But you don't have to walk in a drivenness or something that makes you uncomfortable or just you, no matter what happens in your life, job wise or anything else. God said that He would supply all your need. It was a covenant thing. He said, All your need. According to the First National Bank and whether or not they'll give you a loan. No? no? According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Period. And his word is true. His word is that heaven and earth will pass away. And his word will never pass away. It remains and abides forever. Yeah. Everything is being held together by the power of his word. And if you stand on that word and believe God and just Throw your, your life on him and do what he tells you to do, whatever that is. And I'm not even trying to get your money now. I'm actually, I'm trying to get money to you, okay? God's trying to get money to you. I didn't mean to hijack That's things. Good. Good but people need to be reminded yeah. that it is an anointing. Everything's being held together by the power of his word. And if he broke his word to you, when you're standing on that word 
And like, Lord, where to whom else shall we turn? I mean, that's been our life for 40 years. To whom else shall we go? Hello. And he's told me at times, it's only money. Like, really? <laughs> she seems like a bigger deal than that. It's no big deal to him. If he did not keep his word, this whole planet would just simply blow up and fall apart. Do you realize that? It's that important. He's holding it together by the power of his word. If he broke his word, everything would just go. I mean, talk about the, a reverse Big Bang theory. It would just... He guards his word. And there are people that have believed a lie. And that's a lot of it going around in prophetic circles. And they have a really strong spirit of anger behind it. They got a bone to pick with God about money and anyone who has it. So you have to be prepared for persecution if you prosper. Don't let it stop you. Make them jealous. Show them what a good God he is. Amen. It's time for you to prosper. It's time for the body of Christ to prosper in the midst of all of this stuff that's going on in our country. God wants to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Yeah. He's proving to the world who his people are and how much he cares about them. And he will back you up to the hilt, period. He's got your back on every level, on every side. So it doesn't matter what your job looks like or doesn't look like or if you have one at all. Believe God. Just flat out say, okay, yes. throw your life on him. Believe him and don't let go. Amen. We're still here to tell the tale. Amen. And it's coming. I mean, there, we got a harvest. You got a harvest. You guys, you got a powerful harvest. No wonder the enemy is trying to hold it. The enemy tries to hold it up. I started to make a bad joke. No, 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 don't do that. Um, <laughs> oh, I want to. No, um, the enemy has tried to hold it up, but he can't. He doesn't have the power to stop your harvest. Right. He can't stop it. So don't go out there and keep digging it up. Is it growing? Okay. Leave it alone. Trust God. It's coming. And the more you give, it's coming. And stuff that you... The harvest that you've given years ago is now like full, ripe, white, ready to just come to you. It's You're going to be blown away. In fact, I feel as people in this room are going to come back with testimonies like, oh, I forgot about this, or I'm going to find out about, you're going to find out about um, money that, you know, like those things where you can look online where you they have money in bank accounts that people forgot they had. And you can look it up and see if you've got money somewhere. Mm -hmm. Check those things out. Your money is just all over the place. Angels go get their money and bring it to them in the name Amen. of Jesus. In fact, I call your money in. Yes. Every single person in this room, everyone under the sound of my voice, I call your money yes. to come to you now in Jesus' name. The money that God has placed on this planet for you. It's for you. I command it to come to you now in Jesus' name. Money, come to these people That's right. in Jesus' name. And devil, get your hands off. You cannot stop it anymore. You can't stop it. I command you to stop lying to them about themselves. I rebuke the condemnation off of people about it. I command the financial fear to go in Jesus' name. And devil, get your hands off the money of God's people. And angels of God, go get it. Go get their money, gather it up, mm -hmm. and bring it to them. That's right. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Every single person. Money comes to you now. In Jesus' name. Right. And, and testimonies are coming. Testimonies. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Your best days are ahead financially. This is the Lord told me in one of those dreams. Don't even think about retirement until you're 84. Okay. Yeah. Why? You know something I don't know? I'm a good, well, apparently. Okay, good. 
because supernatural youth was part of the thing too. They went together, supernatural youth, supernatural finances. Long life and the money to do what you're called to do. Both of them have to do with fulfillment of covenant promise, covenant promise to you personally. Everything God has promised to you, he will keep, he will keep that good word. And he said, those that will hold me to it, I will increase your years. I will give you long life because of the covenant and because of my good word to you. I want to. It would be a, my great joy to give you long life and the yeah. money to do what you're called to do. Yeah. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> How do you end that? All right. <laughs> That's not um, <laughs> There's got to be a better way to end it. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> bless your people, Lord. Just bless them. <laughs>